and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. As with everything else Christian these days, you'll find the sacred name heresy within the Christian Flat Earth movement as well. The sacred name heresy is one of the worst divisions in Christianity because none of you can decide on the right pronunciations. I made a video on my Rumble channel showing how the sacred name and sacred law terminology comes right out of Freemasonry and their manuals, so I'm not going to go over that again here. It wasn't one of my best videos, but there's a link in the description for anyone who wants to see it. Regarding the Heavenly Father, do you call your earthly father by his proper name? That would be weird for him and for you. He wants you to call him Dad, or Pops, or Abba, or Baba, not by his first name, not even by his title if he has one. Do you think the president's kids call him president? No. They still call him dad. So why are you obsessing over the first name of the Father in heaven? If he is your father, I think he wants you to call him father. That's what I call him every time. And regarding Jesus, do you think that Jesus can't hear you calling his name in Greek or in English or in Japanese? or in whatever language you speak? What if you can't speak and all you can do is sign? Again, you all can't decide on the right pronunciations anyway. Is it Jehovah or Yehovah or Yahuwah? Is it Yeshua or Yahshua? Is it Yahushua or my favorite, Yahawashai? Lucid Truth, Beyond Flat Earth, and Awake Souls are at the forefront of this particular sacred name movement called Team Yahawashai. This name comes from the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ, which is a black Hebrew Israelite cult. I don't really understand why a bunch of white guys are using this name from this black cult. Anyway. This cult believes that they and Yahawashai, their Jesus, are the real Christians, the real church, or the real children of Israel. But they believe they're from the ten rebellious northern tribes of Israel, not from Benjamin, the tribe that Paul was from, not from Judah, the tribe that the real Jesus was from. That's another Paul, and that's another Christ. A false Christ. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And it's another gospel, a false gospel. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. And the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ are not Trinitarians. I will show you the Trinity in the Old Testament in both Hebrew and in English later in this series, so stay tuned. 
All this sacred name stuff is confusion, and it is not of God. He is not the author of confusion. It is discord. The cord of the church becoming discorded or unraveled, and the Lord hates it. He tells us in Proverbs 6, 12 through 19. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Both the name Jesus and the name Yeshua have power. I've tested them both. Before I got saved, and during my first year as a Christian, I suffered many night terrors. I still do from time to time. I talk a little bit about them in this video on my Rumble channel. Link will be in the description. Chris White's video on stopping sleep paralysis helped me to stop the night terrors. I trained myself to call out the name of Jesus anytime I was having such a dream and every time the name of Jesus immediately chased the demons away. Then I decided to try training myself to call out the name of Yeshua. I was exploring the Hebrew Roots movement at the time and I wanted to see if it would work the same. I'll talk more about my experience with the Hebrew Roots movement in later parts of this series for sure. The name of Yeshua chased the demon away but something interesting happened that time. It took just a second for the demon to flee. It seemed startled for a second and then fled. Every other time, when using the name Jesus, the demon fled instantly. Maybe the demon was a bit surprised that I didn't call out the name Jesus like I had been doing, that I used a different name of the Messiah that time. The point is, I tested this in a real and tangible way, and I found that both names have equal power over the demonic. Quit discording over this nonsense. And please don't hear a spirit of ecumenism in me. I will go into the demonic spirit of ecumenism in the last part of this series and understand that I in no way endorse the coming together of all Christian denominations despite heretical differences in doctrine. I endorse Christians getting their doctrine straight, which is why I'm making this series in the first place. Stay tuned for part 7 tomorrow. Please like, share, and subscribe. My everything has been shadow banned, and unless you share, no one will receive this message. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Well, it's over and over. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. God's going to ride on the wind and tide. But it's over and over. Oh, oh no. Said he would ride on the wind and tide. Hey, children, stop, steal, and listen to me. God walked down to the brandy sea. He declared that the evil was a sinful man, and then he decided to destroy the land. He spoke to Noah. Noah, stop. He said, Noah, I want you to build me an ark. I want you to build it three cubits long. I want you to build it big and strong. I want it fifty high and fifty wide, so it will stand the wind and tide. Is Oh, no, I got to go to ride on the wind and tide, but it's a whole, oh, no, oh, oh, no, oh, 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 no, I got to go to ride on the wind and tide, oh, no, I got to go to ride on the wind and tide, oh, no, I got to go to ride on
got talking Said he would ride on a wind and tide well, after the foundation was laid, and then Noah began to hew and build the ringing of the hammer cried judgment, the hewing of the saw cried sin repent. A hundred years he hammered and sawed, building the ark by the grace of God. When the ark was done, God's voice was heard. He said, Now, Noah, let me tell you what to do. Calling the animals two by two, so he called them in the ark. Two by two, he called the birds, the ox with the kangaroo. Then he called in Jephthah, the ham and sham. Then God began to flood the land. He raised his hands to heaven on high, shook the stars and moon from the sky, shook the mountain, he troubled the sea, hit the wind to his chariot the wheel, he stepped on land, stood on the shore, and declared that time there wouldn't be no more. But it's over, and over, oh, oh, no, oh, 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 no, a gospel right on the winning tide. Thank you. 